So hello everyone, I'm Lamadi Dia and I'm from Palestine. I attend the American School of Palestine. Today I'm going to be forwarding the article in Bordering Identities from the uh, Oriental Institute Museum of the University of Chicago. So this article is written by Iman Sa'a. She's a chair and professor at St. Xavier University. An effort to preserve Palestinian culture, this study focuses on embroidery from different cities. So first I have to introduce the Palestinian embroidery and its important role in our society. Embroidery has for a long time represented the Palestinian culture through its customs, which in this case is almost exclusive for women. Historians believe that Palestinian thobe or dress goes back to 3000 years ago. Canaanite influence is evident in the symbols of our ancient embroidery and still present in the color. For instance, Canaanite means purple, which was a color extracted from shells on the shores of Palestine and Lebanon back in the time. So we see the thread that the threads in the Palestinian thobe focus on the various shades of this color. For example, in Ramallah and Java, it borders on dark red, and in Hebron, it borders on brown. In Beir Saba, it borders on orange. Palestinian embroidery had been changing over the centuries due to many factors, including economical and political conditions. After the occupation of Palestine, for instance, embroidery came to have a patriotic significance and express a nationalist belief. By the 1980s, many women started running embroidery businesses to support their families, and that also added to the evolution of the Palestinian embroidery style. It underwent many revivals and renovations in terms of style and fabric, but mostly it still retains the pre-1948 embroidery patterns. The most famous piece of cloth that employs embroidery is the thobe or dress. Across the chest panel, the shoulders area, the sleeves, the cuffs, and the skirt, much embroidery is present. So it slightly differs concerning style and fabric, depending on which region the woman is from. The embroidery is a way for each woman to express her pride and identity. And many of the motifs and shapes signify a specific meaning in embroidery language. Studying this tradition after reading this article really helped me see how much detail goes into such a simple tradition of custom really it gives perspective into how deep each facet of our culture is. These are six wedding and festival thobes from different cities. So at the top left corner is Java. Its thobe is famous for the, op for the opening in the front and the bright yellow, red, and green colors. The, in the Eastern region, Jericho is noted for the little embroidery its thobe has. The thobe was extremely long and folded multiple times to protect from the heat in the morning and the cold at night. And an interesting fact is that the length signified wealth. So the longer the dress is, the wealthier the woman was. Uh, in the southern region, Hebron was noted for the heavy embroidery it had with red and orange threads, as we mentioned before. The article touches in detail upon the patterns of each thobe but I'm going to talk about only three of them in details. The coastal region, uh, the central region, these are my personal favorites, Jerusalem, Ramallah, and Bethlehem. In Jerusalem, the thobe was usually made of imported fabrics since it always had international trading relationships. Its embroidery is usually pretty similar to that of Bethlehem, but also represented the many historical phases of the city. For instance, the chest panel had the symbols of the queens of the Canaanites. The sides of the thobe had crusader symbols and also had Islamic symbols and some verses from the Quran as an indication of the return of the Islamic rule to Jerusalem. In Ramallah's thobe on the right, it was a white roomy linen thobe with wine red stitches. It was significantly noticed for its famous arch on the chest panel and the tall palm on the back of the skirt and also the vertical bands on the front and back of the skirt, on the front and the back. The sleeves had simple embroidery on the cuffs and the thobe in general was a stomach dress, though it was worn year round. In the middle is Bethlehem. 
the melak so, which means the royal dress. It was the most expensive wedding dress in Palestine at the time. And many people from different cities would buy parts of it, not all of it, to sew on their own wedding dress. It was made of linen with a high percentage of silk and embroidered with silk, gold, and silver threads. It required great skill and lots of effort. The embroidery was famous for its circular and zigzag patterns, mainly inspired from the elaborate Christian church decorations and the ornate Ottoman clothing. Most of the embroidery lies on the chest and the side panels, colorfully designed with red, green, and yellow. It also was famous for the short sleeve velvet jacket, also couched with silver and gold threads. So the reason for the differences you see between these cities is the individuality of each of them. Each style was inspired by the geography of the area around the women who wove these dresses. For instance, Women living in mountainous areas wouldn't have as much embroidery on their dress as those living in cities, since they had to work and didn't have as much free time. A famous saying goes, which means in English, much free time teaches embroidery. In any gathering, women knew from which city each was because of the embroidering on the toe or on the thobe. For instance, women from Beit Dajan always had the orange blossoms on their dresses, like the ones in the bottom of the slide, since they were famous for their orange orchards. In some cities, what women wore also represented her marital status beside her economic one. Each city had different influences from, the, in, from trade and international relations, and was, as previously said, heavily influenced by the political events in the country. For example, a post-1948 tobe would have the embroidery of Palestinian flag and the Dome of the Rock at the fines of the occupation. So if any of you in, is interested in knowing more about this, some researches I would recommend are these two. The first one is Reinventing Cultural Heritage, Palestinian Traditional Costume and Embroidery since 1948 which is a study that talks mainly about the historical perspective of the Palestinian embroidery. And the second is Patterns from Palestine, which is a collection of many different businesses led by women. Each of these chose to revive an aspect of the Palestinian heritage through, the, through embroidery, ceramics, jewelry, and And thanks for listening. That's my contact.